Hello, my name is Tom Davis from Vidlocity Media, and today I'd like to share with you a very crude review that I've done of the Rokinon 85mm 1.4 Prime lens. I tested this lens for focus, chromatic aberration, barrel distortion, vignetting, and bokeh. All shots were done on my Canon 5D Mark II, which is a full frame sensor, of course. Here's a shot with the focus chart at 600% magnification. With the camera at 1 60th of a second shutter speed, ISO 400, and the aperture set at f3.3, it's really sharp and the edges are soft but defined. At an aperture of 1.4 and 600% magnification, the focus holds up. Focus? Pretty good. Now let's check out the chromatic aberration. At ISO 1600, shutter 1 60th of a second, and the aperture set at f13, under 400% magnification and checking the corners, we see no chromatic aberration. Excellent, right? Absolutely. I could say that if we opened up the aperture that the CA would still be absent, but I'd be wrong. At a shutter of 1 60th of a second, ISO 400 and the aperture all the way open at 1.4, we see this. You can see it with no magnification, but here it is at 200%. And don't look away as we zoom in 400%. Luminescent greens in the upper right hand corner of the image and clearly purple setting itself up in the lower left. The middle is less affected and at 200% magnification it doesn't seem to be too troubled. Somewhere between f13 and f1.4 something goes terribly wrong. Let's try to narrow down where it is. Okay, looks pretty good of course at f13, ISO 1600. Still looking good at f9.5, ISO 1600. Still impressive at 5.6 ISO 1600. Is it holding up at f2.8 ISO 1600 under 400% magnification? Seems so, but let's get a little closer. At around 500 to 600% magnification, you do start to see some green fringing emerging in the upper right hand corner. Let's move up to an aperture of f2 ISO 400 1 60th of a second, and at 100% we can see the green. Somewhere around 2.8 on this lens, the chromatic aberration starts to creep in. Now that's big trouble if you bought this lens for its big 1.4 aperture. But let's check out barrel distortion next. For this, I performed a really simple test. I took a picture of some scenery with some rigid geometry in it, printed off the picture, and then took a ruler to see if there were any bending or warping in the lines. There was no discernible barrel distortion that I could see using this test. Uh, vignetting was another thing I looked at. Uh, there is some very subtle but very definite vignetting on my Canon 5D at, with using a full frame sensor. Uh, on the crop sensor, uh, Canon T2i, I did test that one out and there is no vignetting whatsoever because the lens image so clearly overlaps the smaller sensor. But if you want no vignetting on your lens, you are going to be disappointed with this lens. Bokeh. Well, with the vignetting problem and the chromatic aberration trouble that we've already seen, bokeh has just got to be ugly, right? Wrong. It has a creamy quality that can pleasantly focus the eye gently on the subject. This shot is at a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, ISO 100, and the aperture set at 9.5. To show you how much depth of feel you can pull from this lens, check this out. Wow! Shot at 1 2500th of a second, ISO 100, and, a sh and the shutter wide open at 1.4, you get this. A tiny sliver of usable focal plane, and just inches past it, unintelligible blur. Here's a shot in my kitchen, aiming down the 6 foot counter. Shot at 1 60th of a second, ISO 400, and f1.4, you get this. Pleasant little luminescent discs of specularity and a focal field of just a couple of inches. Widen up that aperture to f5.6 and increase the ISO to 1600 and you get this. You can see more, spe more perspective detail and the higher ISO is starting to introduce some gain, but the bokeh handles it quite well, I believe. And at f11 ISO 6400, you can see the grain start to take over. Next, I took the lens outside to grab a couple of simple shots. This shot is at 1 2500th of a second, ISO 100 and f1.4. Super narrow depth of field, and again, at 1 400th of a second, ISO 100 and f5.6. 5.6 seems to be this lens's sweet spot for me. Super tight focus, 
a rich bokeh, and no chromatic aberration. And this lens has other problems as well. It's a prime lens, so the focal distance is set, but it's also manual, so there is no image stabilization, there is no autofocus, and no communication back to the camera to help set the exposure levels automatically. Now that's not a problem for the serious DSLR shooter who prefers to have their camera set to M and welded that way. Setting the exposure through the viewfinder is a little tricky and takes some practice with this lens because what you see isn't necessarily what you get and you have to dial in uh, a few stops of compensation to get the desired exposure that you're looking for. So this lens is mediocre at best. It's completely manual. It has no image stabilization. It has no autofocus, no communication back to the camera, chromatic aberration issues, wrong. This lens you can pick up for less than $300 right now. And it stacks up very well with lenses that cost two to three times the amount. With a little practice with this lens, you can get some amazing shots. And I think you'll be really pleased with the performance of this lens if you use it for the kind of shots that you know it will be strong at. In fact, this entire review was shot using this very lens. Thank you for your time and have a good day.